So we've looked into the basics of Flutter. We looked into state management solutions. Now I want to take a little deeper dive into how Flutter actually works. And we're going to start with the main concept in Flutter, and that is widgets. So let's get into it. So Flutter has actually published some great documentation on this topic. There's this Flutter architectural overview that they released recently, and the link will be in the comments. So take a look if you want. And there's this whole section on widgets. So they have widgets, composition, building widgets, widget state, and state management. In this video, we're going to basically go through this whole section. So what are widgets? Widgets are basically the building block of Flutter UI. The way your Flutter app works is you have a run app function, and then inside you define the main widget that it needs to run. So let's say we have a my app widget. This my app widget then builds out a layer of widget trees going down up until it gets to the last layer, and that basically defines your complete UI. So the starter app that you start with in Flutter has a my app widget, then that builds a material app, which builds a scaffold, which builds app bar and center, and all the other widgets below. So if you launch the starter app that Flutter gives you, and you open Dart DevTools, take a look at the inspector page, and you'll notice you get an actual widget tree. Same one we kind of described. You have your my app as the root widget, which leads to material app, which leads to home page with a scaffold center, all that stuff that you see there. So a big topic that they take a look in the architecture is composition. By composition, they mean basically having a bunch of little widgets that do only one thing and put together, they can do more complex things. So the goal in Flutter is to have small single purpose widgets. Some example of these are padding, which does one thing, it pads your content. Then align, which aligns your content. Decorate a box, which obviously decorates whatever widget you have. And gesture detector, which detects gestures, of course. Now, if you put together a bunch of small widgets like this, you put them together, you can get more complex widgets. One great example of a more complex widget is actually the container widget. You might think it's a very simple widget, but the container is actually made up of a lot of other smaller widgets. A container is actually made up from limited box, constrained box, align, padding, decorated box, and transform widgets. And I can actually prove this to you if we jump into the code. So here we have the same app we're running. And we have this text within the container. We click into the container and we scroll down to the bottom of this container widget. So we'll see here, this current widget is the one that gets returned. You see it's a limited box inside of a constraints widget inside of an align, inside of a padding, inside of a colored box even, decorated box, transform, all those. So the container widget is actually not such a simple widget. By using these small widgets that can do very specific things, it can put them together to do very complex things in Flutter, such as draw a screen, adjust layouts with rows and columns and things like that, track user activity, theming, animations, and much, much more. So if you've been working with Flutter for a while, you've probably heard the statement, everything is a widget. Well, this is only kind of true. Technically, everything in Flutter is an element, which gets translated into a render object. We're not gonna get too deep into that topic, maybe in another video, but one concept you could take away from this is that widgets are like blueprints. Using these blueprints, stateless widgets get converted into stateless elements, and stateful widgets get converted to elements and a state. So then we have the building of the actual widgets. This is done inside the build method that you probably already know about. The build method is the actual thing that creates your widget tree. If your state has changed, it just rebuilds that build method where it changed. And then there's the widget state. So as you know, Flutter has two types of widgets, stateless and stateful widgets. So stateless widgets are immutable. That means they cannot change over time. And then there's stateful widgets. Something you might not know is in a stateful widget, the widget itself is actually immutable too. But it has the extra part of the state, which whenever that changes, the widget gets rebuilt. And then you can call the set state function to cause a rebuild of that widget. By separating the widget itself from the state, Flutter is actually a lot faster. Because this way, it doesn't have to care about what the state of the previous widget was or anything. It just rebuilds right away using the state that is stored next to it. And then we have state management. 
You've probably heard this topic a lot with a whole bunch of packages trying to solve this problem, but Flutter actually has its own state management. So why do you need state management? It's for when you have multiple widgets that use the same state. So let's say you have a big app and you have specific state that you want to hold throughout the app. Maybe it's something like the theme. Maybe it's something like user information. Either way, you have this big widget tree and all of these use that information. Without state management, you would have to pass a parameter to each and every single widget. But with state management, you have a widget that wraps around all of this and can provide the state to each and every one of the widgets below it. And that widget you can wrap it with is called an inherited widget. The inherited widget will give you access to the state no matter where in the widget tree you are below it. And the way you access it is by having your defined state and then calling dot of context. You've probably seen Flutter itself do this all over the place. For example, there's theme.of context, navigator.of context, and media query. You probably used these within one of your apps already. And those are made possible because of the state management you get with inherited widget. So why are there so many packages for state management if Flutter already offers a state management solution? Well, that's because for bigger apps with a lot of state, inherited widget can actually get pretty messy. So you saw how we have to wrap everything below our widget tree in the inherited widget? But we would have to do that for every single state within our app. And thus, there's a lot of packages created to help out with that. The top four packages that I would recommend are Provider, GetX, Block, and Riverpod. And I have videos on all four of those if you want to take a deeper look. So there we go. That's a deeper dive on widgets. I really enjoyed making this video, so let me know in the comments if this is a style that you enjoy as well. If you have any questions or anything, leave those in the comments as well. Like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.